Hello everyone, my name is Bogdan Popescu, I'm a professor of neurology in Bucharest, Romania, and uh, I'm very happy to be again in CONI, this time in a virtual CONI, uh, and uh, I do thank very much Professor Amos Korchin for this opportunity, and I'm also happy to be in this debate with Professor Luisa Spiru, a good friend of mine. Um, and the issue for the debate is whether uh, stress can cause dementia or not, and uh, I have to argue for no, even though it is not a very strong no, but I want to, to make some uh, points um, in this uh, causality. I mean, I think it's not a direct causality, as I, I will try to, to show in the, next, in the next 15 minutes. I have no conflict of interest. Uh, well, Finally, what is stress? So I suppose that we, we kind of, of referring to, to psychological stress, or this is the way the question is addressed. So there are many different uh, uh, definitions for stress. Obviously, these are some here. Uh, uh, long time ago, it was considered kind of a stimulus-based definition, actually an internal collapse uh, uh, caused by a high external pressure. And then uh, 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 different definitions, the response-based definition, which we understand very well, it, it uh, was uh, stated by Salier in 1956. And this means that there is uh, some stimulus which is noxious and which produces a response. And in the early time of the response from the physiological point of view, we have a sympathetic adrenal medullary activity. And then later on, or in a chronic phase of stress, we have the pituitary adrenal cortical activity. And it is considered that this is kind of a general adaptation syndrome from the physiological point of view with three stages. It's uh, the first one is the immediate al alarm uh, reaction. And then we have this, the second is the autonomic activation, the resistance phase. And, and if it's uh, uh, more than that, if the noxious stimulus continue, actually leads to exhaustion of the person. And afterwards, you know, people talk more about the dynamic process view, referring to stress. And this includes, in a way, both internal and external factors, which actually differ a lot from one person to another, from one population to another. So it kind of takes into consideration the unique characteristics of the person of, of, of uh, which is stressed actually and, and under different circumstances. So we might have the same amount of stress, but uh, uh, different reactions in, in different persons. So that's the, the way it happens, obviously. Well, what I want to say today is that actually stress is not necessarily either sufficient to cause dementia. So I don't say that this doesn't have anything to do with dementia, but it's not necessarily sufficient. So it might be one factor influencing, but it's not the cause of dementia. Because why I argue for that? Because dementia actually is a syndrome, as we all know, uh, with uh, uh, a long uh, list of possible causes. So how can stress be the main cause for roughly 50 different causes. So it's, it's difficult to imagine that, at least it's difficult for me. If we take, for instance, only the most prevalent form of dementia, and we know that these are probably Alzheimer's disease, vascular uh, dementia, uh, dementia with levy bodies, uh, frontotemporal dementia, these are the main types or more, most prevalent types. No, it, it should mean that that kind of stress is causing all of them. So, or is, is it only the cause for some of them? So this is not clear coming from the question, but maybe my opponent will make it clear. Moreover, now we know that there is a lot of over overlap from the pathological and from the clinical point of, of phenotypes uh, of this pathology causing dementia, meaning that we, we uh, uh, rather uh, uh, most frequently see, for instance, Alzheimer's disease overlapping with cerebrovascular disease, but not only that, with, with uh, Levy bodies pathology or whatever. So it, it might mean what? That, that uh, uh, stress is equally powerful to cause all these states. I mean, 
cerebrovascular uh, uh, and uh, proteinopathy, at the, at the uh, uh, pathological lesions, again, we might have uh, plaques or tangles or levy bodies or peaks bodies. So, how is stress capable of uh, doing all that pathology? I mean, if we go even in molecular details, so we know that beta secretase and gamma secretase activation leads to uh, formation of a beta peptide, which after that, uh, obviously, deposit under the form of plaques. So, what does it mean that can stress alter the activity of these secretases? Uh, I don't say it's not like that, but it's difficult to imagine, and I don't think we have direct uh, proof for that, or either to, to hyperphosphorylate tau. So, what is stress doing? Is it increasing the kinase activity? Is it decreasing the phosphatase activity? How, how does that correlate? However, I, I have to admit, that this is a paper from a, a, a very powerful research group, and we know all Professor Virginia Lee and Professor John Trojanowski from Philadelphia, uh, and they were able to show in a, in a model that chronic stress actually exacerbates, you see, tau pathology in a specific animal model, and they found also that this is dependent to corticotropin releasing factor receptor. We have a lot of, of influence of our hormones in the brain, so something might be there, but it's difficult to believe that it's so non specific. I mean, it can influence all kinds of this uh, neurodegenerative pathology and even vascular pathology and everything, like, uh, for instance, the ubiquitin proteasome uh, pathway. How is that influenced by, by stress? We, all know that dementia in different forms uh, is depending on a, a genetically determined process, on aging decline, on environmental risk factors and, and comorbidity, and on, on neuronal repair and compensation mechanisms. How, how does stress to do with all of that or, or only to part of that? This is to be clarified. What I should emphasize uh, still uh, on the issue would be that I, I could agree and I could make a, a pact with uh, Professor Spear with Luisa that uh, stress might influence the comorbidities. And we know that here, for instance, in this graph, uh, we have an asymptomatic phase with estimated start, for instance, of amyloid deposition. And it might happen that, and we know that vascular risk factors, for instance, are able to, to accelerate this and move uh, uh, the, the pathological process to a preclinical phase maybe earlier. So I think maybe we can we can find stress here in, in aggravating uh, uh, comorbidities and vascular risk factors. And I will uh, try to show you uh, some data from the from the literature. Uh, this is from Bruno Dubois, famous paper with uh, uh, research diagnostic criteria for Alzheimer's disease, and this was suggested for all other main uh, uh, dementia causes as neurodegenerative diseases such as uh, frontotemporal or DLB. Uh, we have a kind of a dementia threshold. So the question would be, might stress, you know, uh, uh, influence this threshold uh, uh, this is an, another another question. This depends on the on the uh, uh, networks in the brain, on the neurotransmission status, or anything. So it might happen that chronic stress uh, could influence part of that, but not all the process. So that that's what I'm trying to say. Well, to prepare this presentation, I just I just uh, made a search on the PubMed, and I wanted to see from what we know that we call vascular risk factors. And we know that from many different studies that these vascular risk factors are able to increase the risk of dementia, either uh, of the vascular dementia, but not only that of Alzheimer's disease itself. Uh, and I try to see what data is published about stress influence of these vascular risk factors. So, well, we have some factors which are not vascular, but they are influencing the, the risk to get demented, such as ApoE gene and the form of ApoE4 isoallel, that obviously is not influenced by, by, by stress. So this is clear. Then on diabetes, is not is not clear data regarding the control of diabetes depending on stress. I, I would suppose that 
a person which is stressed controls more difficultly the, the diabetes mellitus, but I didn't find clear data in this, in this line. But all the others, meaning hypertension, atrial fibrillation, chronic heart failure, carotid atherosclerosis, hypercholesterolemia, and smoking, they seem to be aggravated or even, you know, uh, provoked uh, in part by, by stress. So that's the line of thinking I think is reasonable. For instance, this is a, a, a paper published uh, uh, five or more years ago, and they looked, you see, in the carotid artery intima media sickness, if there is any, any link to psychological, psychosocial factors. And they looked in four cohorts and six cross-section studies. And actually, uh, in most of them, all except one, they reported a significant positive association between stress or psychosocial factors and uh, the carotid artery intima media thickness. So it means that stress might be linked to development of, of atherosclerosis. This is a, a position paper. You see significance of psychosocial factors in cardiology and again, coronary heart disease, chronic heart failure, arterial hypertension, some arrhythmias were linked to, to uh, different uh, psychosocial uh, uh, conditions. Atrial fibrillation, again, another report this year showing that uh, uh, people, with, which, people with, with stress or, or negative affectivity such as depression, uh, they uh, are uh, more uh, prone to have uh, atrial fibrillation and complications from atrial fibrillation, we know obviously that the, the uh, most uh, uh, severe complication of atrial fibrillation is uh, uh, embolic stroke. So vascular lesion mean uh, obviously risk for uh, dementia. So just to cut a long story short, uh, I, I would like to conclude that stress, meaning psychological stress, does not cause dementia per se. Uh, stress can, can trigger or influence a series of factors condition, and I mean by that uh, uh, vascular risk factors, and to increase the risk for different dementia types. So this would be maybe the, the, the way I uh, at least uh, can formulate that, uh, uh, seeing the data and uh, what was, uh, was published. And again, stress is not necessarily either sufficient to, to cause dementia. On the other hand, uh, stress can cause dementia in some instances. I will give you two examples. A person with burnout generated by a stressful workload try to relax. And you know how people relax in different ways. So this person uh, start to ride a motorbike with a very high speed. This is giving relaxation to some friends of mine, for instance. And uh, the person is unfortunate enough to have a serious accident with traumatic brain injury uh, which result in, in post-traumatic uh, dementia. So this is an, in, uh, a direct link between stress and dementia. That I can understand, that is, it, it's possible. Or an uh, old hypertensive man may be having also cerebral uh, amyloidosis, uh, has, for instance, a, a, a fight, a stressful discussion at work or with his wife, which produces high blood pressure uh, at, uh, at the time of fight, and then it results, unfortunately, uh, in a hemorrhagic stroke. And uh, we know the obviously post-stroke dementia is a very well-known uh, condition. So if I look, yes, stress might, might uh, uh, be the cause of dementia, but some, for some very uh, specific situation. Otherwise, I really consider that uh, globally speaking, uh, stress is probably able to aggravate some risk factors such as mainly vascular risk factors, different comorbidities that we know that at, in turn they, they can increase the risk uh, for dementia. So this is my view and I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.